going through the book of Acts for some time. We're already at the chapter 24. And we just want to thank you. And you don't realize, you really don't realize some may how important you are to this ministry, to this program. Not to me, but to, to God. You're very important. Amen. Uh, and we thank you, and we thank we cannot thank you enough for tuning in and watching us every week here at Growing Together Ministry here at Table Bible Talk and the other activities that goes on around here as well, as well as our Sunday morning service and our Thursday night services. We just came out of a, a three-day camp meeting here for three different nights, different speakers each night. And they also go around the world. If you go to Google Growing Together Ministry Worldwide, you can pull it up or you can go to YouTube and type the same information, Growing Together Ministry Worldwide, and go back and watch all the videos and see all that's going on here at Growing Together Ministry. Our goal is to reach the world for Jesus Christ. Our goal is to go outside these four walls that we're sitting here in this yeah. right now, Amen. in this table, uh, this building, uh, not just our community. Yes, we care about our community. We care about Lewiston Woodville, a town of, of a little over 400 people. We care about this, but we also care about Nigeria. We care about Pakistan. Amen. We amen. care about, amen, Germany. We care about France. We care about all the parts of the world, including oh. the 50 U.S. states. So we're reaching you, and we thank you. You are important for us as we share this word together. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to sit at this table once again to discuss the word of God, scripture by scripture, verse by verse, oh, Father. We pray, God, for the audience. We pray those that's watching. We just pray, give us the words of wisdom to speak. And we'll give you the glory in Jesus' name, I pray. We've been talking for some time about Paul's defense. You know, Paul was a powerful, powerful man of God. He was very knowledgeable. And the, uh, he knew very well about the, uh, the the Roman government. He knew work very about the the Old Testament, the Word of God, in which they had at that particular time. And uh, he believed in the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He said he believed that Jesus was God, uh, was the uh, the Son of God. He he believed that Jesus died on the cross that we could have life and have it more abundantly. And the Jewish people and the religious folks did not like that. And uh, many times uh, they wanted to stone him. They wanted to tear him into pieces. They wanted to kill him. And this brought, brings Paul to this point in his life that is here uh, giving his defense, if you will, to the government of that day of what was going on. And this is going to go on uh, all the way up in about chapter 26 or 27 about Paul giving his defense and the different steps. But we remember last week we discussed that God showed up and Paul and told him to be of good cheer, that you, you have need to go to Rome. When God speaks to you or I, it could be in a private prayer, it could be in a, a home, it could be in a church, it could be uh, driving down the highway in the automobile. When God confirms to you that, that, that he's going to allow you to do something, you can rest assured God's going to take care of you to accomplish the mission he's going to give you. Amen. So here we find Paul in his defense in chapter 24 of verse 2. It's where we left off last week. Here in verse 2 it says, And when he was called forth, Tertius began to accuse him, saying, Seeing that by you, talking about Felix, we enjoy great quietness, and that very worthy deeds are done unto this nation by your providence. Verse 3. We accept it always and in all places most notable Felix with all thanksgivingness. 
notwithstanding that I be not further piteous unto you, I pray you that you would hear us of your clemency a few words. Verse 5. For we have found this man a pestilent fellow and a mover of sedition among all the Jews throughout the world and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. They didn't like him. Verse 6. Who also has gone about to profane the temple Paul didn't defame, defame the temple. It was their interpretation. Whom we took and would have judged according to our law. This presents another outright lie. They had no intention of giving him a trial as the word judge implies, but rather were attempting to beat him to death before he, he was rescued. They were going to kill him. Uh, the people wanted to kill him. They wanted to destroy him. You know, people, there are people that don't, unfortunately, unfortunately, their religious folks in church don't like me, don't like you. They hate you. They despise you. They talk. They, oh, they, they talk nice to your face, but get behind your back. They, they'll run you down. They'll, they'll, they'll run you to the ground. They talk uh, uh, all accusations against you. And this, this was what was happening to Paul. The key is what the day and time we're living in. It, the Bible says it's going to get worse. It is getting worse. We are living in, in, in terrible times. Amen. But here we find in these scriptures that Paul here uh, is, is being tried. You know, I'm, I'm sure everybody, most everyone in the, that's listening to this program has been in a court uh, scene. Uh, it may have been a speeding ticket. It may have been whatever it may have been. But been in, in, a, in a, a court court environment. And there you, you're there, you know, and then you got the you got the... Uh, your your lawyer to represent you, then you got the prosecutor trying to, to prosecute you. This was what was happening in, in this particular scenario in, in Paul. Verse 6, who also has gone about to profane the temple. Uh, as I just read, he, didn't try, he, he won't do one that. Verse 7, but the chief captain Lysias came upon us and with great violence took him away out of our hands. This is meant to throw the Roman tribune in a bad light. It was a bad mistake on the part. No doubt the Holy Spirit had him go in this direction. Hey, commanding his accusers to come unto you by examining of whom you also, of whom yourself may take knowledge of all these things whereof we excuse him. Verse 9. And the Jews also ascended, saying that these things were so. This refers to the high priest and those with him who, who joined in with the, their voices of approval respecting their hired prosecutor statements as stated. But then Paul in uh, verse 10 is going to start giving his defense. He's going to start speaking up and give his defense. Then Paul, after the governor, had beckoned unto him to speak, answered. This presents that which the Holy Spirit had said that Paul would do, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Let's look at uh, chapter 9, verse 15 in, in the book of Acts. Go back to chapter 9, verse 15. And this says, uh, But the Lord said unto him, Go your way. For he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel. This was the Lord speaking. He is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. you got to realize, saints of God, Jesus chose you. He chose me. He didn't choose, chose, choose me to do what Paul was doing. He may not choose you to be a man or woman of God to get behind a pulpit and preach the word of God. But God has chosen every saint of God for a purpose and for a reason. And every one of us has got a calling to do something for the kingdom of God. And here we see that Paul, God, Paul was chosen here in verse 
15 of chapter 9, when we went back here to, to read this, he is a chosen vessel unto me. What was his, what was he chosen to do? To bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. That's what that refers to. Verse 11 of chapter 24. Because that you may understand that there are yet but 12 days since I went up to Jerusalem for the worship. So this is 12 days have gone by. So this has been, it's, it's been, it, it won't just a few hours or one day. 12 days have gone by and then Paul's been going through this day after day after day after day. And I'm sure this was, a, if you will, a great trial for him. But even though it was a trial or a test of whatever term you want to use, he was still in the will of God. He was still exact, in the exact place where God wanted him. Now, to be honest with you, none of us want any trials and tribulations. We don't. We want it all smooth sailing, everything going our way in this but saints of God, in this world that we're living in, it's not going to go your way or my way. It's not going to be smooth sailing all the time. That's going to be rough seas, amen. And Paul was in a big storm here, amen. His life was on the line, amen. But even though he was in a great storm and his life was on the line as far as the world was concerned, he was still in the perfect will of God. So don't think that when things is going smooth that, that you're in the will of God. But there's times when it's the opposite, Amen. the greatest storm that you like you've ever fought, the, uh, the worms that you didn't think would come up against you, rose up against you. You're still, amid in the will of God. So even though this was going on for days and days and days, over a week, almost two weeks, amen, Paul was still in the will of God. He was exactly where God wanted him. Even when the disciples was on the ship and the, uh, the, the waves was beating against the ship, the wind was blowing, uh, the ship was taken on water, amen, they were still in the will of God, amen. amen. So remember, amen. amen, staying in the will of God. And that's what Paul was doing in this particular case. Verse 12, and they neither found me in the temple disputing with any man, neither raising up the people, neither in the synagogues nor in the city. 13, neither can they prove the things whereof they now accuse me. They can't, Paul was saying, they can't prove anything that they're saying against me. Where's the evidence? You've seen court cases. The prosecutor has to present the evidence that the individual is guilty of what they're being charged for. And Paul was saying here, where is the evidence that I did the things that you're speaking of? 14. But this I confess unto you, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers. Believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. In other words, I believe, Paul said, everything written, Paul knew the Old Testament inside and out. He knew the word of God. Saints of God, it's important that we know the word of God. Amen. That we have the New Testament as well as the Old Testament. Paul didn't have that. He had the old law, if you will. Amen. But even though uh, he lived during the time of, the, re of the, 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 the birth, the crucifixion, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, amen, but Paul was saying, I know the law, I know the word of God, verse 15, and have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow. But there shall be a resurrection of the dead and both of the just and, just, uh, un, uh, and the unjust. In other words, there are going to be two resurrections. The dead in Christ is going to rise first, amen. That's the first resurrection. But there will also be a resurrection where those that did not live for God will stand at the great white 
throne judgment before God, and they will answer to God, amen, for what they did or did not do. And herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. Let's look at Matthew 22, verses 37. Matthew 22, 37 through 40. Jesus said unto him, Ye shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. 40. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Powerful words there. Verse 17. Now after many years I came to bring alms to my nation and offerings. Verse 18. Whereupon certain Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple, neither with multitude nor with turmoil. This refers to the fact that absolutely nothing was going on at the time which could have given him any type of credit to, the, to these accusations. Who ought to have been here before you and uh, object that they have ought against me. In other words, the ones who accused him were not present here. Where's my accusers? Where are they at? The high priest and the members of the Sanhedrin who were present had not witnessed any of these so-called infractions. 20. Or else let these same here say, if they have found any evil doing in me while I stood before the council. 21. Except it be for this one voice that I cried standing among them. Touching the resurrection of the dead, I have called into question by you this day. This had to do with the Jewish law, which interested the Romans not at all. 22. And when Felix heard these things, having more perfect knowledge of that way, he deferred them and said, When Lysus the chief captain shall come down, I will know the uttermost of your matter. So what here was said, Felix had great knowledge of Christianity, and the Jews present at the trial were willing to give him credit. He was trying to delay the matter, hoping it would diffuse the situation. Moreover, there is no record he ever sent for the individual. 23. I started to say something. 23. And he commanded a centurion to keep Paul and to let him have liberty and that he should forbid none of his acquaintance to minister or come unto him. So Felix considered Paul someone above the ordinary. He was under house arrest, but basically had to run the place. He was to go anywhere in the building. He was, he was free to, at liberty. He wasn't locked in one room or locked in a jail or, or prison. Uh, he had liberty, if you will, uh, to run, if you will, to the, the, the building. He could have as many visitors as he liked with no restraint on, on such activity. So even though we had the courtroom where the people wanted to kill him, but now we see the government is protecting him from that action from happening. Because if, if Felix had given in to the people, the people would have killed him. But that wasn't God's plan. It wasn't God's plan. Uh, Paul eventually did die. And when his ministry was over, he died. One day I'm going to die. I don't know when it's going to be. It could be today. It could be tomorrow. It could be 30 years from now. I don't know. But one day this body is going to lay down. But this body will never lay down until I have accomplished what God has put me on this earth to accomplish. The same with you. Amen. 
And after certain days, when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, which was a Jewish, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. So his wife was the young daughter of Herod Agrippa, the, the first. The Herod had killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. This is who his wife was. In verse 25, as he, Paul, reasoned righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go your way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for you. What Paul was saying in the beginning of verse 25, that righteousness can only come through Christ. You got that? Righteousness can only come through Christ. Verse 26. He hoped also that money should have been given him of Paul, that he might lose him. Wherefore he sent for him the oftener and communed with him. So the note says that the love of money, talking about Felix, was probably more of the reasons he wouldn't give his heart to the Lord. There is no record ever that he came to Christ so close but yet so far. 27. But after two years, Portius Felix came into Felix's room. I mean, Festus came into Felix's room, and Felix, willing to show the, G, the Jews a pleasure, left Paul bound. Now we'll go to verse 20, like chapter 25. So now Paul's going to come before Festus. And the whole chapter of, of this is, 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 Paul, is Paul being before Festus and uh, Agrippa and Caesar. And then when we go to chapter 26, which we probably won't get there today, that Paul will start giving his defense unto the, the people there at this particular time. Now when Festus would come into the province, after three days he ascended from Caesar Caesarea to Jerusalem. According to he ascended, but according to geography, he descended the geography of the, of, of the location. Jerusalem was about 2,500 feet above sea level, while Caesarea is situated on the coast. It's just a few feet above the sea level measurements. Then the high priest and the chief of the Jews informed him against Paul and besought him they began to besiege Festus with repeated accusations against Paul. Verse 3. And desired favor against him that he would send for him to Jerusalem laying wait in the way to kill him. Now this proclaims the idea as thought by some that this was to be done by the same 40 men who had originally made the vow to kill Paul. We discussed that last, last week in Acts uh, chapter 23 uh, with verse 16. Uh, then when Paul's sister heard of their lying in wait, he went and entered to the castle and told Paul uh, that they had come together and they, they, were, they were setting up a plot to take Paul out. This was basically what was happening here. They desired favor against him that he would send for, for, for him to Jerusalem, laying wait in the way to kill him. Uh, but Festus answered that Paul should be kept in Caesarea, and that he himself would depart shortly thereafter. Five. Let them, therefore said he, which among you are able to go down with me and accuse this man, if there be any wickedness in him. Whereas Paul is a Roman citizen and must be treated as such. <clears throat> uh, this past week we noted some uh, hostages from America that was in Russia was released and came back to the United States of America. Our laws are different than Russia. 
Nigeria's laws are different than America and vice versa. Amen. And here we find in this story here, uh, Paul was a Roman citizen and should be handled accordingly to that. He was, a, I was a, I'm, I'm an American. Amen. But when I go to, if I travel outside of America to another country, I am bound, if you will, by the laws of that land. But uh, here, Paul was letting them know, hey, I, I, I'm not just an ordinary man. I, I'm an ordinary man, but I'm also a Roman citizen. And he had to be handled according to the Roman law. And when he had tarried among them more than ten days, he went down into Caesarea, and the next day, sitting on the judgment seat, commanded Paul to be brought. And when he was come to the Jews, which came down from Jerusalem, stood round about, and laid many and grievous complaints against Paul, which they should not, they could not prove. Let me read the notes. Evidently, some Jews from Jerusalem had immediately come to Caesarea in order to testify against Paul. This undoubtedly proclaims the same complaints they had registered some two years before. They charged that Paul had indeed violated Roman law in some manner in which he, in the next verse, hint, but which Luke did not specify. Verse 8. While he answered for himself, neither against the law of the Jews, neither against the temple, nor yet against Caesar, have I offended anything at all. But Festus, willing to do the Jews a pleasure, answered Paul and said, this is what he says, Festus. He feared these Jewish leaders, knowing that they were willing to bring these types of false charges against Paul, they would not hesitate to do the same against him to Rome. The latter part of verse 9 says, But will you go up to Jerusalem, and there be judged of these things before me? So there is a compromise that Festus is offering unto Paul. We got to stop here for until next week. We're going to start at verse 10 of chapter 25. Remember, the day and time in which we're living, the enemy wants to try to take you out. But if you're walking in the will of God, Stand on the word of God. You can accomplish anything that God has given you. This is Pastor Larry Lilly at Growing Together Ministry here in Lewis and Woodville, North Carolina. We'll see you next week, same time, in Jesus' name. God bless. Amen.